Hey guys, it's Miss Haridas here at the Study Hive and today we're going to be looking at the structure of a leaf. Now I know you have waited your whole life for this lesson to learn about all the different cells that exist in a leaf and I'm going to let you in on a little secret. So my little secret is that I talk to my plants every morning. I know that sounds like I'm loopy, but there is actually a method to the madness and I'm going to show you in my lesson why I talk to my plants. So if you remember from our previous lesson of photosynthesis, photosynthesis is all about how the plant makes its own glucose, almost like its own food. Now plants photosynthesize when there is light and they respire all the time, but we only respire. So when I'm talking to my plants, if you look at the equation, I'm actually giving out carbon dioxide as I'm breathing out. And that carbon dioxide is useful to the plant because if you look at the equation over here, for photosynthesis, they take that carbon dioxide in. And in the same way, when they photosynthesize, you'll notice that one of the products is that they will actually release oxygen, which is really useful for me because one of the things I need uh, for respiration is oxygen, which I've just highlighted in the lesson for you. So that's why Miss Haridas speaks to her plants every morning, weirdly. So how does photosynthesis work? Well, carbon dioxide, which is abundant in the atmosphere goes underneath into the leaf. The back of the leaf has these little holes called stomata, these little pores, and the carbon dioxide is able to get into the leaf. And in the same way, uh, water, when it rains, goes all the way down into the soil and then via osmosis, which is the movement of water, it travels through the roots up the xylem, uh, which is in the stem, and then it goes into the leaf as well. So you can see here, you've got carbon dioxide and water that are now in the leaf. When this reacts together, because of sunlight, we will get glucose being formed. So glucose, you can see I've just drawn here, that's been formed in the leaf, and oxygen as a byproduct, you can see here, will get released. So this takes me nicely in to looking at the leaf. Now the leaf is an organ and it's the food factory of the plant. It's where glucose gets made. And in your spec, whether it's GCSE or IGCSE, you need to know all the different cells that make up that leaf. So let's start off with some features of the leaf and their functions. So leaves are really thin and that's great because it has a short diffusion pathway for carbon dioxide found in the air to get into the leaves to the cells they need to go to. They also have a really large surface area and that's great to be able to trap as much sunlight as they can to maximize the rate of photosynthesis. So you can see here I've drawn a picture of all the cells in a leaf and the words are quite overwhelming, almost like a new language, but don't worry, I'm going to make this really easy for you and by the end of this lesson you'll feel a lot more confident on the structure of a leaf. So the top layer of the leaf is the waxy cuticle and it's waterproof. Now a lot of students think that the leaves take in the water but that's actually incorrect. It's the roots that take in the water. So the waxy cuticle allows the raindrops to drop off the leaf and go into the soil where the roots can take in the water by osmosis. Now I want you to remember this waxy candle to help you remember the name of the waxy cuticle and I'll tell you at the end why this is important. Now the second layer of my leaf at the top you can see is the upper epidermis. Now because I'm from the UK and we're famous for double decker buses so this is going to help you remember that the upper deck of a bus is an analogy for the upper epidermis. So the palisade cells are really compact and you can see here uh, they're very, very close together. And this is where glucose fundamentally gets made. So it's really, really important to have lots of chloroplasts so it can trap as much sunlight in order to make lots of glucose. You can see here, it's like the food factory. So I've drawn a little analogy there for you because it's like a food factory that makes the food for the plant. It's also found quite high up on the top of the leaf, so therefore it's really easy to be able to access the sunlight. I've drawn a zoomed in version of a palisade cell here, and you can see there's so many chloroplasts found within the cell, and that's how it can trap the sunlight within those organelles. 
So the fourth layer you can see here are these round looking cells and that's your spongy mesophyll cells and they're really clever because they've arranged themselves to create spaces between them. So gases from outside can come in from underneath the leaf and they can travel very easily to the palisade mesophyll cells. Now to help you remember the name, I've got a little sponge there to represent the spongy mesophyll. So remember the link. Now this round looking circle over here is the vascular bundle and it's made up of xylem and phloem. So it's split half and half. Now the xylem is what carries the water in the plant and the phloem carries the sugars. Now just like in your house, if I think about an analogy, you have so many pipes traveling around your house in order for you to access the water from your tap. And that's very similar to what the xylem is. It's like the pipes of a plant and it allows the water to go and travel around because different cells in that plant will need access to that water and the phloem will do the same thing except it carries sugars to different cells in your plant. Now, here's a little diagram there of a pipe to help you remember the analogy of the pipes in your house, very similar to the pipes in a plant. So this takes us on to the lower part of the leaf and these orange cells at the bottom is the lower epidermis. Now you might notice a similarity between the cells up here, which was your upper epidermis, except like it says on the can, it's the lower epidermis. And to help you remember, we've got the double decker bus again, but this time we're looking at the lower deck of that bus. So right at the bottom of the leaf, you have these guard cells. And just like in the UK, where you have guards that stand in front of Buckingham Palace to allow entry of some people and not others, in the same way, that's what these guard cells do at the bottom of the leaf. They open and close to allow gases to come into the plant. And this is done because of a process called osmosis. Now, the space in between the guard cells here is is called the stomata. So the pores that you will find underneath the leaf is your stomata. And it sounds very similar to a tomato, hence why I've got a picture of a tomato to help you remember the name stomata. So guard cells are your two cells, they open and close, and the gap between them to allow the gases to come in is your stomata. So there you have it, all of your cells found in your leaf going from top to bottom. You've got the waxy cuticle right at the top, you've then got the upper epidermis, the palisades is usually the most important or talked about cells in your exams because they have lots of chloroplast and they are really compact and they're at the top layer of the leaf to maximize how much sunlight they can trap in order to make glucose. You have spongy mesophyll over here and they have air spaces between them to allow gases like carbon dioxide to access these palisade cells. You have a vascular bundle, usually made up of the xylem and the phloem. The xylem carries water, the phloem carries your sugars. And then that brings you to these orange cells over here, which is your lower epidermis. And within that lower epidermis, you have guard cells, uh, which have little gaps between them called stomata. And that is the structure of a leaf. So I have a little game for you to play called the Memory Association Game. Now magicians, when they remember all the cards in the deck, which is really impressive, the technique they use is memory association. So they take a very familiar space, like their bedroom, and as they draw each card, they place it routinely around that space. So for example, they might take the Queen of Hearts, place it on their bed. The next card will be the five of spades. They will remember next to their bed is their desk and they'll place it on their desk. And they connect the dots until they can remember all the cards in the deck. So in the same way, you might have noticed that I put little pictures to represent different cells. And this was a memory association technique to help you remember the names of the cells. So you can see here, I've got the waxy candle, I've got the double decker bus, the food factory, the sponges, a double-decker bus again, the taps or the food pipes in the house, tomatoes and guards. See if you can pause this video and remember the names of the different parts of the cells and I'll reveal the answers in a moment. So here's your answers. For number one, you should have got waxy cuticle. Two was your upper epidermis. 
three was your Palisade Mesophyll, four was your Spongy Mesophyll, five was your Lower Epidermis, six your Vascular Bundle made up of your Xylem and your Phloem, and seven was your Stomata which is the pores found underneath the leaf, and finally eight was your guard cells. So give yourself a mark out of eight, and if you got top marks, a pat on the back, and if you didn't, that's fine, you can rewind the video, watch it again until you get your full marks. I hope you really enjoyed that. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in our next lesson. Bye. So just a reminder, if you haven't seen the previous videos, there's one on photosynthesis and the rate of photosynthesis, which really leads nicely to the structure of the leaf. So go and have a look at them. And if you have any questions that you're not sure about, feel free to leave a comment or find me on Instagram at The Study Hive and I will answer all your questions. Bye.